And welcome to Hannity. We start tonight with a Fox News alert. I have a travel advisory for New York City. If you're a conservative or a Republican or a Trump supporter, beware in the weaponized Biden criminal justice system. Well, political differences are now considered especially heinous. And if New York's powerful Democrats hate your politics, well, a prison cell might well be in your future or some kind of conviction for something, well, that they make up. Without a second thought, well, those, these Democrats, they'll make up a crime, conduct a show trial, rig a conviction with a handpicked Biden donating judge, regardless of the evidence, if they could even explain it. And just hours ago, the former president of the United States, now running for a second term, Donald J. Trump was convicted on all 34 felony counts and will be sentenced, oh, just a few days before the Republican convention. How convenient. But most Americans, including people in that very courtroom, can't even identify the alleged felonies. That's because this is a conviction without a crime against Joe Biden's chief political rival, rival in the middle of a presidential campaign. The only so-called evidence was uncorroborated testimony, let's see, from a serial liar who admits he has an ulterior motive, who is even likely caught lying on the stand during his testimony, we'll see over time, and is now also an admitted thief on top of everything. But of course, the left, they will celebrate. They will sing, they will dance, they will high-five, gleefully call Trump a convicted felon. Now, they're cheering the end of what would be, let's see, equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws. Let me bear no doubt here. This is a sad day for our country. It's a sad day for our justice system, the best justice system ever created by man, the foundation of our constitutional republic. It's literally dying before your eyes. Lawfare now rules the day. If a former president running for a second term with near unlimited resources can be treated like this, no one is safe. This should send a chill down the spine of every business leader and politician not just in New York, frankly, because we have a weaponized Department of Justice under Joe Biden. You step out of line, a corrupt Democrat of some kind somewhere will throw you in jail. But if you beat the living hell out of a police officer or old people in New York City and it's on video, don't worry, no bail needed and a slap on the wrist. Is that justice to you? In this case, Bragg employed this novel, new, never applied before legal theory. Again, never tried in, in U.S. history. He took a far-fetched misdemeanor well past the statute of limitations, then magically converted that into a felony with a federal law based on some nebulous, unspecified federal election violation that was never charged or prosecuted, of which he has jur zero jurisdiction. Bragg then multiplied that same charge 34 times. That's a shady maneuver called uh, count stacking. The case that mysteriously made its way to a far-left partisan judge named Juan Mershon, who, by the way, donated to Joe Biden, Mershon's daughter, a Democratic political operative, who reports say may very well profit from this very trial. That would be cause for recusal. But uh, no one in New York's face ju uh, fake justice system saw this as, what, a conflict of interest? Remember, he was purposely picked for every single Trump-related case rather than having a, a pool that they chose from as per usual course of business. This was a dream come true for Juan Mershon. He never even tried to hide his bias, according to witnesses in the courtroom. Mershon just simply coddled the prosecution, allowing rampant speculation, irrelevant, immaterial smears against Donald Trump. He all but encouraged the prosecution to mislead the jury and insinuate that Michael Cohn's election crimes were tied to this case. He should be viewed as an accessory to the, the Trump crimes before the conviction. That happened earlier today. Very different story with the defense. Mershon actually blocked testimony from an election law expert, Bradley Smith, former head of the FEC. He berated Trump's team and their key witness in front of the jury. He rejected nearly every objection made by the defense. He attempted to silence Donald Trump with what was a clearly unconstitutional gag order, and perhaps worst of all, his jury instructions were completely unconstitutional, telling jurors they didn't need to agree on, on what the phantom law was or the phantom underlying election felony is, as long as they agreed he did something wrong, that was enough. 
for a conviction. And according to Juan Mershon, well, it did not need to be unanimous in the sense of what they believed. Naturally, the jurors didn't even specify in their ruling. In other words, Donald Trump was found insane. Well, that is because it is insane. First, we know from the 2020 Supreme Court ruling Ramos versus Louisiana, quote, there can be no question either that the Sixth Amendment's uh, unanimity requirement applies to state and federal criminal trials equally. That's not all. Here is the U.S. Supreme Court ruling from Andres versus the U.S., quote, unanimity in a jury verdict is required where the Sixth and Seventh Amendments apply. In criminal cases, this requirement of unanimity extends to all issues. And by the way, uh, character or degree of the crime, guilt, punishment, which are left to the jury. Let me repeat, in criminal cases, the requirement of unanimity extends to all issues. That's not what the judge instructed this jury. Trump also has a right to know what he's being charged with. He didn't know the whole time. According to Cornell Law, the Sixth Amendment of our Constitution grants all Americans, quote, the right to know who your accusers are and the nature of the charges and the evidence against you. Apparently, this rule of law, that doesn't apply to Juan Mershon either. He ignored all civil liberties during his instructions to jurors. Of course, it likely wasn't a problem for the jury. They barely deliberated despite the complexity of the novel legal theory at play, and they probably all hate Donald Trump. So it was probably an easy sell. Remember, New York City voted against Trump, well, almost nine to one. You know, God forbid Trump got the change of venue that would have been the right thing to do, not when a political persecution is in the works. No, that's not in the cards. For many Democrats, equal justice under the law is now completely tonight meaningless. They just hate conservatives, they hate Republicans, and they certainly hate anybody with the last name Trump above all else. They are desperate for one-party rule in perpetuity. They are all hell-bent on using our justice system as a political weapon. We've talked about the weaponization of our justice system, a dual justice system. It is all for them a means to an end. Now, thankfully, New York City's far-left Democrats, here's the best part of tonight. They don't have the final say. Now, here's President Trump moments after the verdict. Listen closely. This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. You have a Soros-backed DA and the whole thing. We didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man, and it's okay. I'm fighting for our country. I'm fighting for our Constitution. Our whole country is being rigged right now. This was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent. And I think it's a, just a disgrace. And we'll keep fighting, we'll fight till the end and we'll win because our country's gone to hell. We don't have the same country anymore. We have a divided mess. We're a nation in decline, serious decline. Millions and millions of people pouring into our country right now from prisons and from mental institutions, terrorists, and they're taking over our country. We have a country that's in big trouble. But this was a rigged decision right from day one with a conflicted judge who should have never been allowed to try this case, never. And we will fight for our Constitution. This is long from over. Thank you very much. This case is far from over, and you will get to render the final verdict in this case in 158 days. This case will be appealed. Donald Trump will be vindicated. I see no scenario in which this is not overturned. That's almost a certainty. But will it happen before the election or after the election? All afternoon, all evening, people have been asking me, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Well, as President Trump said, the real verdict will take place on November 5th. And by the way, Voting early, voting by mail, 
overcome your reluctance and resistance, the system we're stuck with. We need legal ballot harvesting to match the efforts of Democrats, hopefully surpass them, partisan observers to watch the voting all day and the vote counting all night. But if you want this lawfare to continue, elect Joe Biden. If you want the border crisis to continue, people coming from China, Russia, Iran, Syria, Yemen, Egypt, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, vote for Joe. They're unvetted. If you like defund, dismantle no bail laws, vote for Biden. If you want more Biden inflation, reelect the guy that caused it, Joe Biden. If you're happy with the wars and the carnage overseas, Joe Biden's your guy. If you want all this, you get to decide, not 12 jurors in New York City. Ultimately, it's your choice. Americans who are rightly outraged by this verdict, they need to take away one major thing. 158 days, you get to decide, and voting early, of course, you get to decide at the ballot box. You get to deliver the final verdict. So whatever you're feeling today, may I humbly suggest, you channel that into action on November the 5th. Otherwise, this is the America you will hand off to your children and your grandchildren, and it will be a steep uphill battle to ever reverse course. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.